Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning, our scripture text is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. And this is what it says. It says, Now it came about in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all were proceeding to register for the census, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. And it came about that while they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And in the same region there were some shepherds, Staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terribly frightened. And the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy which shall be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Let's pray. Lord, the angel spoke long time ago to shepherds. Lord, speak to us this morning. Create in this, this, this worship space enough where we hear your voice. Not just words, but your voice. That we might, that we might know your, your heart. We might know your mind. We might know your spirit. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. This morning the story starts with the emperor. Caesar Augustus. And the emperor said, go. Go. I want to count the people. I want to take a census. Go to your home city. Well, when the emperor says go, people go. Excuses won't do. There's nothing like, well, you know, this isn't convenient because Mary's pregnant. No. The emperor says go, and that's what you do. You go. So Joseph and Mary, they went from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Well, that doesn't speak a whole lot to us nowadays. It doesn't seem like a really big deal. Okay, they went from Nazareth to Bethlehem. But it is a big deal. Nazareth to Bethlehem is 80 miles. They had to walk. It's like walking from Atlanta to Macon. That's a very big deal. 80 miles. And how fast do you think you could travel with a pregnant woman? I'm not real sure, but I know it's not fast. And it seems like you, you're going to your hometown. The family would be there and say, we saved the best room for you with the softest bed. We know you've had a long journey, you and Mary, and here it is just for you. But family wasn't there waiting for them. 
Not only that, we read this morning that strangers weren't even there waiting for them. There was no room for them in the inn. That Jesus was born in a stable and laid in a manger is what it tells us. And manger is not another word for bassinet. Manger is another word for food trough. It's, that's where sheep are fed. That's where goats are fed. That's where cows are fed. Slobber all over the place. Not the nicest place to be born. It, it wasn't a first century equivalent to a hospital. No, this, it was nasty back then and it's nasty today. And they wrapped him in clothes to hold him tight and they, they laid him in that manger. And then the announcement was made. It was made by angels. By angels. The angels said, I bring you good news of great joy which shall be for all the people. I like that. I like uh, good news of great joy for all the people. Uh, all. All. That's a big enough word that includes you and me. That's about as general as you can get. Good news of great joy which shall be for all the people. For today in the city of David there's bo been born for you. Born for you. It goes from what's most general, all the people, to born for you. What's most specific. Born for you. A savior. That it's a gift. It's a gift. It's Christmas time. And among the, all the things that we do at Christmas, the giving of gifts, I think we, 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 we've nailed something. We've gotten it right. That there's in the, the giving and receiving of gifts that we began to experience a, a change in us. There's something that goes along with the giving and receiving of gifts that, that makes us vulnerable. You give a gift and you say, this is for you. And we receive the gifts that are, are, are meant f for us. We don't just go searching under the tree for something we want and we take it. No, that's called taking. A gift is something that's given for you. And the angel says, this is given for you. Well, we know whenever we're given a gift, or whenever we're giving gifts, there's, there's something in that, that that makes us vulnerable. When we say, this gift, this gift, it's for you. Well, then we're looking for a response. Is it going to be thumbs up or a, the stink eye? The, the, this gift, it's, it, it, it's, it's given for that person. And so we stick our neck out. We're going out on a limb to, to give a gift that's meant for you. But there's also, there's also some trepidation in receiving a gift. Because there's something attached to a gift that's given for you. And it's a, what's attached is an understanding. It's an understanding that, that, that makes us vulnerable. This is my understanding of what you need. This is my understanding of who you are. This is my understanding that's attached to the gift of what you need. So this Christmas, men, if you get... A gift of clothes from your wife, your children, and your loved ones. It's not enough to say, no, 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 I, I don't need clothes because the hole in my favorite sweater is a small one. No, they think you need clothes. That's what they, they understand, that you need clothes. And so that, that's the message that it is attached to the gift. That's the message attached to the gift. I don't know if you've seen a Christmas story yet. Every year we watch a Christmas story. And that story where Ralphie, he wants a Red Rider BB gun. Because the way that he sees himself, he's Red Rider. And all that's needed to complete his, his understanding of himself is that Red Rider BB gun. He's the protector of the family. He's courageous. He's the one that's, that's going to stick his neck out for the family. But Christmas Day comes along. And as they begin to open gifts, the gift for the Red Rider BB gun is not there. But he does open one gift, and this gift is from Aunt Clara. And this is the gift. It's red bunny pajamas, or pink bunny pajamas. He says he looks like a, a pink nightmare. 
I don't know if you remember that or not. A pink nightmare. And then his inner monologue, this is what he says. He says, Aunt Clara was under the illusion that I was perpetually four years old and a girl. Forget about who he sees himself as. He sees himself as Red Rider. Strong, courageous, and bold. She sees him as perpetually four years old and a girl. Well, that's what the gift says. That's what the gift says. And what the angel is telling you and me is born for you. A gift for you is a savior. The God of this universe thinks we need a savior. It's not enough to say, oh, but the whole, it's a small one and it's my favorite. It's not enough to say, no, 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 I, but you don't understand. I'm Red Rider. I'm strong and courageous. And that's not enough. The Savior of the universe thinks you and I need a Savior. That you and I need a Savior. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Born for you is a Savior. That we need a Savior. We need a Savior because people are broken. A little while back, I was cleaning out my garage. And because this is the place for confession, I want to make a confession. I don't clean out my garage very often. Not near often enough. But while I was cleaning out my garage, I came across a bucket. A bucket of tools. And in this bucket, I, one of the tools I found was a pry bar. And this isn't just any pry. This is a very good pry bar. And I have used this pry bar for a lot of years. And it's great. I pulled up all the carpet in my house before it was replaced with this pry bar. It, it is such a great pry bar. It'll get a nail out of concrete. Not only that, I used it to remove siding on my house. This is a great pry bar. I used this to, to renovate my shower, to pop off the tiles in my shower. And the only thing I'm going to say about that, if you ever think about renovating your, sh your shower and you want to do it yourself, here's the recommendation. Don't. Get someone else to do it. They will use a pry bar very much like this one, but it's a great pry bar. It's a wonderful tool. And its purpose is as a pry bar. And then I found another tool. And it's a hammer. This is a pry bar. And this is a hammer. This is for hammering in nails. But if you use the hammer as a pry bar, what you get is half a hammer. Guess how I know. Yep, I used the hammer as a pry bar and now I don't have a hammer anymore. I used it for a purpose that it wasn't intended. It wasn't made to be a pry bar. It was made to be a hammer. So now it's broken and I have a half a hammer. This is a screwdriver. And screwdriver. This screwdriver is a, it was made. It was made to screw screws in and to unscrew screws. But when you put a, a screwdriver together with a hammer and you use it as a, tri, a chisel, you can't screw things in, you can't screw things out, you just screw things up. Guess how I know? Because I used it as a chisel. I put it with a, with a hammer and I used it for a purpose that it wasn't made. So I just... I just clipped off the tip right there and now there's no screw in the universe that will fit the tip of this screwdriver. So really it's not good for anything other than using as a sermon illustration. It was made for a purpose and I used it for a purpose that it wasn't made so now it's not good for that purpose anymore. This right here, it had a long, hand. it's a gardening implement, and it had a long handle that went along with it. It's a gardening implement. It, it, um, it's made for scratching around in the dirt. It has another name, but that's no longer politically correct. And the, the long handle that was on it was useful for scratching around in the dirt, for digging holes in the dirt. And, but I used it for something else. I used it as a pruning tool, 
which seemed just perfect because that long handle, it helped when reaching inside my holly bush. Nobody wants to get all stuck with stickers in a holly bush, so, so I used it just to knock off the, the bottom branches because the, the, they were growing in the dirt, and I used it, in the, and, and I got just about two good whacks, and then now it's no longer a gardening implement. It's not good for anything. Did you know you and I were made for a purpose? We were made for a purpose. In Scripture, it's very clear telling us the purpose for which we're made. As a matter of fact, the Bible starts off letting us know that we humans were made for a relationship with God. To walk with him in the cool of the day. To walk with him. That we might know his heart. We might know his mind. We might know his spirit. And that not only that, but we were made for other people. That Adam and Eve were in the garden together. To cultivate and keep the garden. To, to grow together. They were made for relationship with God and relationship w with one another. But when they decided that they were made for another purpose, instead of doing what God wanted, instead of doing what they wanted, broken is the word. Broken. And again and again and again, all the way through the Bible, we have these stories of people who are trying to, to do what they want rather than what God wants. And time and again, we see that they're broken is what they are because they're using their lives for a purpose for which they weren't made. Isaiah 53, 6 says, All of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. And that's just what Jesus did. He came and he called us to follow to become his apprentices. To walk with him in the cool of the day. That we would know, well, so we would know his heart. We would know his mind. And quite intimately, we would know his spirit. Because you and I, we need a savior. So the angel, the angel of the Lord brings to you and me Good news of great joy, which will be for all the people that in the city of David is born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. A Savior. God sent a Savior because, because people are broken. The second thing that I want to talk about this morning, the last thing I want to talk about this morning is, is a gift. Jesus Christ, the Savior, a gift for you, for me, a gift. A gift is given because life is hard. And the minute that I said life is hard, it may be that your mind went to something you're dealing with right now. Or maybe your mind went to something that, well, maybe is dealing with you. Or maybe it's a hard time, a time of suffering, where it's a loved one that's dealing with it. And nobody needs to tell you that life is hard. Nobody needs to tell you that suffering is real. Nobody needs to tell you that evil is real because you're right in the middle of it. Nobody needs to tell you that. And Jesus didn't just come to, to talk about it suffering and hardship and evil that Jesus came when suffering and hardship and evil were most acute and he took it on himself to nail it to the cross to take away its power for you and for me and he didn't rise from the grave to say look no scars that that those things that you fear might happen, they won't really happen. No, he rose from the grave to say, place here your finger in my hand and place here your hand in my side. That those things that you fear 
may happen. They really may happen. But in them there's nothing to fear. That he's overcome the suffering. He's overcome the hardship. That he's overcome the evil. And he rose to give that strength, that power of the risen Savior to you and to me. That you're not alone. Hebrews 2.18 says, For since he himself was tempted in that which he has suffered, he is able to come to the aid of those who are, who are tempted. He's able to come to the aid of those who suffer. You're not alone. That he's been where you are. And he has the scars to prove it. Not only are you not alone, that he's here with you now. Not one day, but this day. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God? It dwells in you. The risen Christ in you. Well, that is good news of great joy. Good news of great joy for all the people. Good news of great joy for you and me. That born a Savior, and his name is Jesus Christ. Today, alive in you. This morning, it may be that you are in that hard place, that lonely place. Hear the good news that you're not alone, that he has strength and power in that hard place, in that lonely place. In that strength, in that power, it's more than enough. It's more than enough. This morning it may be that you've never received that strength, that power of his Holy Spirit. That you've never agreed to follow. You've never agreed to be his, his follower or his apprentice. That instead that you've lived a life of trying to get what you want and when you want and where you want. I have good news for you. It doesn't have to be that way. That today, today you have an opportunity to receive the Savior and to turn and to follow. And I want to pray with you now. Join with me in prayer. Jesus, good news of the greatest joy that it's, it's available to us here, now, today. That we can, with your strength, we can follow. And even in that hard, that difficult, that, that lonely place. And Lord, when we invite you in, we know we we receive a power that's not of us. It's your power. Risen Christ, Jesus, to live in us, to give us strength today. Because Jesus, we need a Savior. Give us strength enough. Strength enough to turn and to follow you then we might know your heart. That starting today, we begin to practice and, and know your mind, to grow in intimacy with you and, and know your spirit. And this day, because you are our Savior, may we give to you that brokenness that you make us strong strong in the broken places. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. 
Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that He made us in His image. And what the Bible tells us is that His image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create Humans in our image, He made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to Him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.